Okay, sure, if we need to start to talk about laboratory right now. But, before I start with the proper talk, let's make a little small talk. Have you hear about laboratory management? Are you interested? I want some hands up. Any hands up? That's awesome. One, two, two three, three. Four. Okay, we're on the way. So, let's present ourselves. I can't say it's funnier than the lab, but let's make it our best effort. I'm Ignacio. You probably, most of you, doesn't know me. So I'm working since 2008 with Sebastian. We have started with 10 ERP, open ERP, and a lot of names. I'm not sure how much of them. In 2011, we have migrated to Triton and start to work with Triton itself. After we did new health, we have worked in, in South America mainly with public health institutions and things like that. On 2000, um, we have started the Ocalino project, working with laboratories, which is the topic we will bring bringing us today. But today we're going to talk about Calais, right? Um, mainly in here because I like the Belgian beer. So, set <laughs> that packs up. Let's continue. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and you might may remember me from talks from Leipzig, <laughs> okay, you know, the engineer limbs, and in Buenos Aires, in the red and white, I'm okay, um, yes, I was talking a lot about Ocalino, now I am going to talk about claims, <laughs> and like Ignacio said, we were working for several years, together um, I had the opportunity and, and glad to went to each conference of Triton and to host one in Open Cyrus. And then in 2016 I quit uh, the company I was working, Timbra, um, I think two months I think, before you or some personal uh, things and uh, um, we were getting in touch with the IT manager of the laboratory that was running uh, the system so after a while he contacted me and he asked, he asked me to keep developing the project and, and give support um, but then uh, in this now, now in this year we we thought that all that huge uh, project and huge work should be um, open to the community and given a new a new impulse and a new direction. So we for the Ocalino source scope and uh, started the Calenis project. Um, just a note, um, right now there are uh, the Ocalino project exists, it's a, a totally different project from Calenis. Ocalino is mostly uh, focused on, on the sector. Um, Calenis works on a laboratory that does uh, food testing. Um, you will see uh, some more things about cutting. Okay, let's go through a few basic concepts first because we're talking about um, LIMS and I don't know about you, but the first time I hear that word, I say, what? <laughs> and then they start to talk about laboratory samples and things like that. And I said, what? Okay. So, let's go through basic concepts first. We'll try to make a reintroductory talk right now. <laughs> of course, you could ask for details later if you're interested. If not, there's no problem, I understand you. But, 
What are the basic elements of every means? Of, of, uh, sorry, I have a few language problems sometimes. So, our first basic element, it's a sample receipt. But first at all, what a sample is. Okay. Let's figure out this situation. You produce apples, for example. I use this in a, in a coffee talk and I think it's really graphic. So, you have your apple, you take it from the field, and you need to export the apple, right? But there are a few check boxes, complete at least in our country, before you could export that apple, right? So, you take a piece of that apple, that is going to be our sample, for example. That piece comes to my laboratory. Right? In that moment, I take that piece and I make a smaller pieces that are our fractions. And over that small pieces, I have services. A service will be, for example, a group of analysis, which is our uh, minimum unit. Right? That analysis is the, the hard fact, the one who said, okay, this number on this element is good on that apple and can be exported or it cannot, right? But in order to do all of this, I need to receive my sample, do all of this process, and of course trace my sample over the laboratory process, right? Which only starts on that reception. Which is our second main component. You need to planificate what are you going to do with that sample, right? We have that little piece of bubble in our hands and we need to say, okay, I'm going to run this analysis with these devices and it's going to be made by young, for example, right? You set the day, you set the devices and of course you are still tracing that uh, little piece of bubble. After that, you need to process it. Right? The, our piece is going through the devices and I need to check the, the quality. No, I'm not talking about the quality of my apple, I'm talking about the quality of my analysis, for example. So, you need to check for devices and things like that. And finally, you need to give an answer to your client. And the answer, of course, is not just you can't or you can't spot. You are giving a whole report, a result, a result report, uh, which is the one that client could use to uh, present on the government and say, I can export. Right? Of course, we are using a simple example, which is a, a little more complex, and there are a lot of variables in this process. Just a little thing. If you have any question, just raise your hand, interrupt me, the only thing you're not allowed to do is go to meat tomatoes or any other fucking vegetable, please. So, when we start designing colonies, we have the same thing. We, have, we need all this laboratory management, management, which is great, but behind that we have a company. A company will have an accountant, a company will have a stock, and so on. I'm not going to explain to you what an ERP is because I'm sure it's not necessary. And in that time we said, okay, this is like more of a stripe, because we start on a, lean, um, a laboratory process and we end in a cost problem. We start in the laboratory and we end finally on a stock problem. In that point we said, of course we're using tracking, uh, I need to be clear about that. In that point we said, we need to find the solution as a whole thing and start to work in that direction Thanks to God, I think. So, the beauty result was a workflow like this, right? We're going to make a brief talk, so just uh, we'll take a look and point a few things which I think are interesting. We have our two uh, outside elements, which are the customers <coughs> and the suppliers, and let's uh, start by the customers. We have of course, uh, the chance of work with the customers via an online portal. That's it. For example, uh, that little piece of apple could be registered in the portal which is connected with Kalenis, of course. And that goes to that box there, 
our online sample entry. The process in this point is the same, right? You got the up and so on. Which, which is the good thing about this? We're talking to that later. Just remind me if I don't say it. The process we have seen on the center is Kalenis itself. We'll say it in some way. Because you have uh, the sample's reception, the verification we were talking about, and a laboratory notebook. It's a concept we're going to touch just a few concepts about uh, in a few minutes. The other process who generate analysis and the reports, the results check, and of course the uh, reports issue or via email or so on. Right? The other part on the right on the screen, it's the ERP itself. Every process ends on uh, a Python functionality as the invoicing, connected to the accounting, and so on. I think you already know pretty well this. Which are our patterns in the time of designing these modules? Not the Triton models, of course, but we're following, uh, in fact, the, their principles. A huge problem in laboratory is uh, the data error. I think it's common in a lot of industries, but in these volumes of information it's great, because for every little piece of apple you will have, for example, thousands of analyses and so on. And trace every little bit is, of course, a problem. Before this implementation, they have another system, but before that, they do all of this in paper. So, our main objective was to minimize the data errors, which are, of course, a cost problem, finally. Other huge problem is the operational time, because there is a lot of manual work, and we can't avoid that, that's for sure because a system can't, for example, with a little piece of apple. At least not you know, our system. But we could make it the life easier if all the information flows with the process. And that goes with the third item, which is we need to reflect the reality. That was, our, I think, our first mission here, because Laboratory was uh, a new world, at least for us, and reflect the reality of the laboratory we was working, allows us to implement it easily by, by side, and on the other side you could see the reflex one each other and see if the process is really accomplishing her, his mission. Right. Just a little about the sample entry. Here's a little example of the, the web interface. This is a supporter who allows the client to introduce uh, the samples. And of course, the manual sample entry, which is the, the Triton interface. A little thing about this, uh, what you're seeing is in fact a group of samples, and then we continue with sending levels, the sample, the fraction, the service, and finally the analysis. Are you following me here? Any question? You want me to go? There's no problem. That's right. Yeah. The website is scripted to Triton or just some flash Triton? What he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, a few things about planification. We have the resource optimization, like this. Uh, doesn't deserve much explanation. It's the same as the beginning, because we need a process we will follow with the task. The planification is based on this simple idea. You need to could ex ex schedule what are you going to do with that evil little piece of, of apple. But there is a, a little complex background because all of this model is in fact designed to accomplish these two certifications which are the good laboratory practices, but I forgot to translate the icon, my bad and the ANISO certification. And that's the point about the automatic information history. In order to accomplish this certification, we need to historize every process on the, the planification. What is this? I need to say, 
I take an apple and I move it there. That's right. But I need to re register a history about it in order to put, to put in form to the government. Right? That's the point, uh, the key point for accomplish this certification, which is uh, almost basic for every laboratory in this area. I will continue, so you should hear another voice. Um, okay, I will try not to bother you too much. Um, one thing I want to say is that in this kind of laboratories, this is like a, a huge laboratory, and inside of that, it is divided in different laboratories that have different um, technical fields. There is the chemistry laboratory, the microbiology laboratory, the toxic uh, waste laboratory, and the environment laboratory that deals with water analysis and so on. So you have uh, like, I don't know, um, 60 users, most of them and lab staff, and each one um, are in each own laboratory. The microbiology uh, employee doesn't have to do anything with the chemistry lab. But when a customer requests analysis, they request analysis from several different laboratories for the same sum. So in this electronic laboratory notebook, and of course the supervisor the administrator of the system can see all different kind of analysis to do. An analysis can be like um, a group of 300 different kind of analysis that you have to do to, to assemble and that are grouped. Um, but each laboratory only sees um, the analysis that have to do with his own uh, stuff. So data uniqueness, of course, there is an integrated workflow, there are more like, I don't know, like there are 10 actions that you can perform in the wizards to launch in the electronic laboratory notebook. Um, I don't know, it's too technical. Um, let's go on. Um, this, in these labs, there are the, the the employees that uh, enter the results of the analysis, if they do manually or they import files from the devices, and there 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 are supervisors that um, accept and confirm these these results. And one, once once <coughs> they are confirmed, the the customer can see the results in the online portal. Um, and of course there are processes that I think yes, you can make the the report, the results report to be generated by laboratory, by customer, and there is a workflow of approval because each laboratory supervisor can check the report to see how it's going to be sent to the customer or how the customer will be downloaded it from the portal so it must approve them. Uh, it's a workflow, you can make like versions, it's a versioning system for the for the results report. And maybe the report has to do has to be uh, written in another in different language from the ones that the user is running the in Triton because you have to show this report to for you for him for example. So it's supported. There is electronic signature that in this case it's running with a token, a special token that signs the PDF and this uh, signature can be opened in Adobe Adobe Reader. It, it was a request for from this laboratory. Um, automatic email delivery and um, this new module will be useful of course because right now it's all made by hand and once 
it is uh, confirmed the, the results report for each services that the customer asked to do for each analysis it generates a line of invoice and you can see the invoice line with several more uh, fields that are pointing to the to the sample entry, the sample itself, the customer or information. There is a special like process management um, and you can download the, the inputs from the customer's portal. And several different kind of data analysis they requested to see where are the bottlenecks, where are the, the people that is taking too much time and to improve the performance of the laboratory and critics also of the analytics and accounts. And, and finally there is like a new layer we have designed that we call roles that they are and they group try them groups. We already talked about this two years ago but um, it's working really well. Um, you can define, for example, a job position and what groups that job position has. And when, for example, a user goes in a holiday and you have to give new permissions to someone to replace them, it's easy. You only have to um, change the job position, save, and internally assign the correct groups. And it's easy for the IT manager of the system. Um, that's, that's it about the functionality. We like to talk a little about the release process. Okay. We had, uh, we find that it has not much sense to talk a lot about the functionality because I'm pretty sure if you're interested in that you will check it on the code, you will call us, you will talk about, about it in, in every dinner and the talk will be terribly long without sense. But we would like to talk a little about the project itself which I think is good for, for both, for the community and for us of course. And we have a few things to talk with you. Because we know Karenis is developed on Triton, we know Karenis is running on Triton, and we know Karenis is integrated with the Triton models. There's a lot of Triton in, in just one film, but we have a little poll to do and we need your help. Because if we take all of this in consideration, the release process, process how it should be, right? And we have three options. We have the option A, we release the first release version and we said and that's zero and that's all. Our option B is following the Triton releases and the option C of course is for the random number and everybody can figure out what version it is. So, I want two things from you. I want hands for the different options and if somebody comes with the final stand for his position, we are happy to hear about it. So for option A, Hans, please. Right. For option B. And who is going to vote for option C? <laughs> That's good, right? That's good, man. If you could follow the buttons, I'm really happy for you. And the ones who doesn't vote are sleeping or what? Yes. Because I see people who doesn't. Date-based date person. Date-based person. Date-based. <laughs> okay, we'll have to think about it. I, I like the option C, but... Okay, why you vote the option A? Who vote the option A? I saw a hand. You will tell us why, what is the benefit of this? Because the users are more interested Okay, and uh, option B? Anybody? I saw a lot of hands. 
Because when I install uh, your software, I want to know which version of Triton I have to put inside. Right, as simple as that, in, in fact. Any other comments? Yeah. I think uh, it is uh, option B because uh, at least the administrator who has to administrate the, the server, he must know which version it is and then it is best uh, to speak the same language. In the Triton client there is always a version of the client and I don't uh, like it uh, if it's another version number because uh, nobody understands. Okay. Yes. Uh, I wrote it for option B and I think the, it's because like that you will be able to use the default template of Triton. Right. And so we have to go back to the server. Yes. Another uh, thing is uh, for option B. Um, you can start your project with version uh, 3.6. Uh, the laboratory has 3.6. Now Triton is on 4.8. And then uh, in the laboratory, everybody knows uh, we have 3.6 and we, we need to migrate. And then it's clear this is the old version, this is the new version, and everything's clear. You can run the old version uh, beside the new version and then migrate uh, after the testing phase is uh, finished. So it's uh, good for everyone. It's simple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question on this, and I'm, I'm sure that I'm not that uh, acquainted with Python, but uh, why don't you use there? Because if you are publishing anything to PyPy, why does it even like you can define what dependencies your module has against Triton? So, you know, like, when you release a new version of your package, you can tell, like, okay, well, this targets the Triton version X, and, you know, yes. it won't allow to install unless you have that. I mean, like, I'm, this is something I'm not getting why uh, you have to decide this. Yeah. It's, it, you know, I, I, get the, I get the technical arguments. But let's suppose I tell you, you should install uh, Kalenis 1.0, right? I know. In fact, you have dependencies and so on. But Triton, I think I don't think Python has a simple dependency. It's not like a little library who made the graphics, for example. Uh, it's a core of the frame. And not only the framework, the models itself are part of that core. And if the models are migrating, we need to migrate with them. Because we need the functionality. And if the functionality change, we need to figure out how to uh, solve that or how to deal with that. We have no much options in that point. So I don't see it as one more dependency, as you said. I see it as the... You can be multiple dependencies. You do not try to make whatever modules you want to install. But then, you know, when you release, you need to be sure which is the need for each of those. Yes, but uh, I don't see it's clear to say, for example, I'm, maybe I'm spoiling, but I'm talking about it. Uh, in fact, give me a minute. Sure. Uh, the whole was on binding, of course, but maybe we can see the future because we have already side or numbers. That's why it's easier to talk about this right now. So, what we decide? We'll have... You want to talk about this? Okay. We decide to have our releases three months after the Triton release. Uh, for testing purposes, and of course we have the uh, time to migrate and continue with the, with the testing. Our first official release is going to be in January next year. And of course we have decided to follow the Triton version. Uh, most of the reasons have already been said by you. And I go to a simple reason, in fact, uh, it's easiest for us. It's simple as that, I think. Now we know we have Kalenis 4.6 and we had have Triton 4.6. It's uh, a little revisionist, but it's uh, the main reason. And it's simple for the user, it's simple for the implementer, so uh, we have to think a lot more about it. What we're going to include in our first release, or why we haven't made our first release, uh, First thing, we're finishing the migration, that's the uh, first point. And we're working on test scenarios, our first test scenario for the whole software. 
which wasn't uh, easy, and weren't. And of course, the first release with all the functionality will have talked really fast about it, right? But one of the key things, things here is that we want a roadmap for our project, and we want to share our roadmap, and that this is what we're trying to do, or this is what we want to do. Uh, of course, it could fail, but the intention is it's pretty good. So on our, our second release will be in July, and there are a few things we found out. We found out the key of the of the new version. Human resources productivity intended to be a, a way to measure our human resources inside, for example, the technicians, and the possibility to say this technician is uh, taking too long for just for uh, cut an apple. Uh, the same with the devices, but talking about how much productive is the device. For example, this equipment has been broken two months on the last three, so I need to figure out what to do with that. And the last one, uh, it's a new layer we're trying to work with, which is the devices interface layer. Has no official name yet, so if you have any idea, it's pretty welcome. And the general idea is to take the information, for example, from, from an Agilent uh, device, which is a monster like that, who process the samples, and give me uh, raw data, raw information, Take that information, process it, because we need to make a few conversions from the that data, and finally insert that registers inside the the Triton layer, which is of course uh, in the Galenis model. That could be our three main goals for the next release. Any question until here? Okay, right. We have any anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You said you have no questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> not, but okay. Uh, uh, I see a lot of productivity stuff for uh, as well. How does it need? is linked to the production model pattern? Yes. And and no. are you using the work center yes. and stuff like that? Or? Um, the production uh, module, it is used um, to generate some kind of uh, uh, products that are needed for the laboratory. But no, the, all the productivity stuff, it uh, works uh, getting data from a Kalenic model, model, not from the production orders. And uh, there are, we are working on, on that. And for the computation because sometimes they are quite complex and we are using pandas, importing pandas to make some computations and then generating the, the image and we put the image in the right Because as far as I understand, your sample you can use as a product and when you make a test on it, at some point you change the sample in the convert it into something else, that's the result of the test. We have, we have a model that is called the analysis. The analysis related to a product. And, but no, but, uh, I guess it's the service you are selling. Yes. The service of the analysis. But yes. yes, again, uh, you're talking about that little piece of purple yeah. and how we transform that. But it's not in fact a production process. That's the thing. We use a... Uh, sorry, Euro. He asked for the, if we're using the production model for the base, and we're starting to talking about why you see them or why not. So there are two cases. In the first one, uh, the one who we uh, actually use the production model, we are making a little uh, reactives, right? The laboratory makes a product and sells it. That's the, the prototypical case of the production model, in fact. But in the other case, we're not because they made in a product, you were just made it a little split. We are numbering that split because uh, from that apple you get, for example, uh, five fractions, which are the number one and one, two, and so on, and then you trace it. But uh, that 
uh, wasn't inside the production process, it's just inside the laboratory process. Uh, different uh, use cases, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's about the production, but you have also the work center, uh, the, the machine over and so on. So maybe you could use yeah. acid dose and for the uh, track the productivity of, uh, mm -hmm. of a work center or the, the time tracking and so on. We're, we are not using it yet, uh, just for the simple reason. This project was three years ago, and in that time we evaluated what have and said, okay, it starts uh, for the client uh, requirement, of course, but it's a chance because we will check it. Yes, so, yes, you will find it, but, but using products. Uh, it's maybe that it's not so easy because uh, in, in Triton the product is usually not, not an identity. It is uh, there is the identity missing. So you have uh, every time a new product, and uh, you will have a big database with uh, products uh, you never use again. Yeah. So That's why yes, the the fractions are not binded with the products. Mm -hmm. The only thing binded with the products are the analysis, which is in fact what we're selling the laboratory. It's our service. So the fractions could grow up and grow up as their own model and the products go just through the way of the services and this uh, little reactive cell laboratory cell but and, and one or two products no more than that. We, so we have only a generic, a generic fraction product um, because um, when we move the fractions to locations now it's in this freezer, now it's in this and so there are different lo different locations, and so we we made stop moves, and all the moves are with one generic uh, the same product called fraction, but there is another field in the stop move that is pointing to the real fraction. The stop Yes, the stop came after. <laughs> yes, it's not a thing. I'm just curious, um, how is the workflow managed? I mean, there must be a dispatcher kind of thing, or the, uh, I mean, is there, I mean, a typical analysis, like you get an apple, you know, mm -hmm. um, this is your standard five or default five analysis. But um, I'm just interested, um, just the handling, is it like the, the, the probes, how is it called? The, 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 um, the, the samples is it just put on a tray and then goes to the different points and, and it's or is it organized by 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 Triton to say okay this product has to go there and you have to do it in this time or how is it managed? I right. Mean, it he, I have no really idea how it is. Yes, a little about the process. He asked about the, the workflow in general and how they manage the samples, for example. That was a little weird, but. You get it. So, the sample school came to the laboratory in several packages. So, at the time we registered that, that sample, we need to say it came in a bubble, it came in a pack of any number. And from that you need to unpack it and start with that process, which has several steps. Uh, for example, you take the apple and start with the first cut then you separate it, that's the point one. You said, well, I have two samples, right? From that half apple, for example, you need to make smaller pieces. These smaller pieces start to, when I'm talking about smaller, I'm talking about really small, yeah? I'm talking about chunk the, the apple. That little uh, portions with other fractions are ready to go to the devices, right? Uh, there are exceptions, of course, because some fractions need to be processed with server chemistry or whatever. I don't know that kind of details. But that follows the, the process. That's a planification process. When you say, okay, I need to run this analysis on this fraction. What are the steps I need to follow? You could say, for example, I need to uh, chunk it and I need to combine them with that reactive, for example. And then you could go into the equipment and go on with the process. 
just a note. Um, this this analysis um, can be uh, made with different kind of methods, and for example, the dome or, or other kind of analysis, it's different if it's in chemistry or microbiology. Each kind has its own methods, so you have like a large typification table, and you so you can say that for and for example, fruits uh, that are adults, that uh, for this kind of method of, and this analysis, these are the lowest limit, the, the, the highest limits, and, and a lot of more variables to, to input. So first you have to define this information in order to, to work the, the words. All right, and added to that, that typification is uh, the one who determines if uh, for the apple and for uh, its fresh fruit and it's an apple and you need to do that analysis that have those steps but if a peach and it's fresh fruit they're not the same steps maybe maybe it's not the example but I think you can is that what you was saying? right any other question? you wanted to kick us out right? Yeah. right? I'm for